Welcome to Narc Abuse No More, where we're here to help educate you about narcissistic abuse because your feelings do matter. Hi, and welcome to another podcast of Narc Abuse No More with your host, Dr. and Evangelist. K.O. Rich, thanks for tuning in today. Today is, what is today? Today is Wednesday, February the 15th of 2023. I pray that you had a blessed, stress-free, narcissistic-free, abuse-free week so far, and that the remainder of this week will continue to be so as well. But if not, we're going to be talking about a few things today. Again, my name is Dr. Kale Rich with Narc Abuse No More, where we're here to help you admit what you feel in order to heal from the effects of narcissistic abuse, because your feelings do matter. Yes, they do. But before we go on with today's podcast, I would like to invite you to visit us on our website at www www.narcnarcabusenomore.org. Again, that website address is www.narcnarcabusenomore.org. And on our website, you find valuable information regarding narcissism, relationships, and if you have missed any of these podcasts, you can go on the website and listen to us from there. Now, just to let you know, we are on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central on SoundCloud, our radio spot. Spotify, Spreaker, Google Play, iTunes, CastBox, and Deezer. We're also on Amazon Audible, Rumble, Brighton, and the Tube. That's right, we are on YouTube. So you have a variety of different platforms to listen to us from. And if all else fails, you can go directly to our website. Also... If you are in the Atlanta, Georgia area and you want counseling, then you can go on the website and schedule an appointment with me on there. Um, I only do in-person counseling. That's for women, families, and children. Women, families, and children. And I will, uh, we can schedule an appointment and go from there. So only in person appointments. I'm no longer doing the telephone appointments. Um, I don't like doing telephone appointments. I like doing um, face to face, if at all possible. So we will be doing um, in person appointments. All right. Um, today, what are we talking about today? I pray that you all survive uh, Valentine's Day. I pray that you did not go backwards. I pray that you know that you are your valentine you gotta love yourself okay not in a selfish sense but to know that you deserve love from someone who respects you and most importantly you have to know that within yourself that you are of value today we're talking about some qualities that i I looked at this website for us uh, um um So qualities that's good for leaders to have, but not only just leaders, it's qualities that should be in a person whom you are invested in when it comes to the relationship. So rather you are a man seeking for, uh, uh, to, you know, get married to this woman that you are thinking that this could be wife material or a wife that a woman, should I say a woman that is looking for the husband that uh, would be good marriage material. Because when you invest in relationships, that's one of the biggest investments you're going to ever get, okay? And so you want to make sure that the investment is worthwhile. Many people look at their portfolios and they're looking at their stocks and wonder, okay, should I invest in this stock or that stock or this company, that company, whatever the case may be. You want to make sure that you are investing your heart your emotions, your time, your life with the right individual. And when you don't have that, then it's time to see and make some uh, make some decisions as to where you think things are going to go. Now, this is not going to be a long podcast today because I have plumbing that is backing up and that is not a good thing and the plumbers will be coming out, make a long story short. So this is going to be abbreviated... <laughs> 
podcast today, but I, I still wanted to come before you all and, and give you something to think about, some things to ponder, some things to um, do a self-examination about. Is this the relationship that you're involved with someone right now? Or if you're not, just them, some things that you should know before choosing to dive in. So number one, 10 qualities that makes a great leader, a.k.a. spouse or someone that you're dating. The ability to inspire. The ability to inspire. A leader has to be able to inspire those whom uh, uh, whom they are uh, managing. So if you have a leader that has no inspiration to inspire you as an individual to do your best, then that's, that's a sign that they may not be a good leader. This is also relevant for those that you are in a relationship with. Do that person help you to want to become be- a better person, a better individual? Uh, uh, they, do they try to help you to uh, reach for those goals, reach for those dreams, do your best, and uh, inspire to be whatever it is that you have envisioned yourself at being and if that's not happening then something is wrong with that relationship something may be wrong where you might not need to proceed further if you not have not actually said i do to this individual the person that you are invested in should have an ability to inspire you to become the best that you can be and vice versa and if that person only brings out the worst in you and and you are not inspired to do anything and 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 you're unable to or incapable of being able to inspire them because they are so toxic and they're uh, abusive and they don't allow you to inspire them to do anything and they have no inspiration themselves they have no motivation themselves then something is wrong number two a good leader has the ability to delegate duties Um, one thing when you're dealing with a a leadership role you can't do everything yourself that means you have to delegate duties okay so when you when you're talking about a relationship you're talking about where each person has a role to play it's not dictatorship where you better earn my clothes or iron my clothes or else or you better take out the trash or else or you better give me sex or else you know and i'm talking about within the confines of a marriage i'm not talking about any freebies okay um i'm an evangelist so you t- you know what i'm talking about all right so in order to have that good relationship or that 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 quality uh of being a good leader in a workplace you have to be able to delegate duties because you can't do it all yourself it's the same way within a relationship a relationship was not is not meant for just i or me or my okay we're talking about these pronouns we, a, a relationship is for we that means that each person plays a role and when you have someone that's trying to monopolize the relationship, someone that is saying is either my way or the highway, and each person feels as as the uh, or the other spouse may feel that they're being shortchanged, they're not able to to uh, uh, to live out their role that they want or what you all have agreed to within that relationship because somebody is being domineering, somebody is monopolizing, someone is not allowing you to be the best that you can be then something is going to be wrong in that relationship. Each person plays a role. It takes two to make a relationship work. A relationship is not a party of one. So therefore, when you are in this relationship, but you feel like you're by yourself or you're doing things by yourself and you don't have the help of the other person or that uh, other person is not allowing or or, are enabling you to be able to do the roles that you all have agreed upon, if there has been an agreement, then something is wrong. This is why it's so important for, uh, for couples to go to premarital counseling. I don't care how in love you are with that person. It is so important for a person to go to premarital counseling. I don't care how old you are. Sometimes people think that, oh, because I'm at this particular age, I don't need to have anybody tell me about relationships. Um, Yes, you do. You have older people getting divorced just like younger people. 
And so therefore, it is important that people go to premarital counseling in order to talk about issues. Normally, in the beginning of the relationship, it's all lovey-dovey and everybody's over the moon and all those. Those things are great, uh, uh, admirable, love it. But the thing is, is that as life goes on, there's going to be challenges. And so it's good to talk about those challenges that you may face in the relationship before you say, I do. Some people move too fast in the relationship and, and and let me just say this just because you see someone smiling and happy and stuff in the beginning they're in that honeymoon phase but then that time time love takes time and so therefore when you are in this relationship with this person you're going to see some things you're going to get to know some things you're going to have the challenges because it's not only about you it's about the other individual and if you have not, if you're planning on getting married to someone and you have not gone to premarital counseling, I suggest that you do. It will often help you also to know if that person has some hidden things that they may have been trying to keep secret, but then the, the counselor can try to bring those things out. So you'll know if you're dealing with someone that's abusive, emotionally abusive, not, e not even emotionally well enough to be in the relationship, to make sure that you're emotionally healthy enough to be in the relationship. So many people take up, take their bags into relationships, but it is so important to talk about those things. Number three, communication, communication. This is one major problem that people have in relationships. A good leader is able to communicate effectively this is also in the relationship so many relationships break down because of a lack of communication so therefore when the communication breaks the relationship breaks is is it gets destroyed so you want to ensure that you have this as uh, 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 as one of the qualities that you have within this relationship if you don't have communication, you don't have anything. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a moment. <music> Just be 
one you want to be with me <laughs> okay so we're we're talking about we're talking about having those leadership qualities within a relationship so number four a sense of humor it is so important for a leader to be able to have a sense of humor to lighten up the workplace this is also important in a relationship if you can't laugh come on now you gotta be able to laugh because so many things are there there's the world is serious as it is relationships gonna have is is highs and lows at times or whatever the case may be so you gotta be able to laugh at things and if you don't if you're not able to laugh with that person that person's so sensitive that person takes everything out of context uh, uh th- this is not going to be a uh, a relationship that you're going to be able to be happy with having because the person you never know what kind of bag that they're coming going to come out of and i'm not talking about uh humor in causing someone else pain we know that narcissists will often make jokes in order to hurt the other person, whoever their target of their abuse. They will say things that they know that you are sensitive about for us. Maybe your looks, your weight, your, whatever it is. And they will do that in front of other people or and or privately to try to make you feel bad. We're not talking about that type of humor because nothing is funny about that when you're trying to hurt someone. We're talking about just being able to take things uh, and, and just laugh at, at the little things in life because that laughter can help you go a long way when there are some maybe some trying times in the relationship whether someone gets sick or there's a, 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 a some kind of situation that come in your life that you all will have to band together and work together and think about those good times that you once had and will continue to have you might be just going through a little uh patch whatever may life may brings may bring number five confidence a leader you can't lead effectively if you don't have confidence and this is also in a relationship if you do not have confidence within yourself then you will not be able to have a thriving relationship because you're going to always be running on fuel on fumes of insecurity that also uh, seeps into trust if you're not confident within yourself then you're not going to be able to trust the other individual because you're always going to be thinking that they're looking for the next best thing because you're not confident in yourself so when you're in this relationship unless that person gives you some reason not to trust them you need to work on that if you if you know that you have some issues that you're not confident in, whatever it is that you know that you need to work on then work on that before you get into that relationship and if you're with someone that you know is very insecure very jealous very envious envious doesn't have confidence then these are some things that need to be worked out before you say I do number six commitment in order to lead well a good leader has to have commitment to the job if they're not committed if they're not committed to the job then you can expect the workers to be committed to the job and this is also in a relationship if, if you want to be single then you should never get married let me repeat that if you want to be single then you should never get married so many people get married and then they cheat and 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 do all kind of things that they would do when they were single well why why bring somebody else into that mess that you're in if you're saying i'm not the type that can be monogamous then you need to never get married And be honest with that individual that you're with that, hey, I'm not marriage material. I don't want to be with one person. Don't hurt that person by cheating on them, lying on them, and and causing them pain when you know that this is never even your intention to. And let me just say this because I've seen a lot of people there so-called engaged for five years. And if you're happy with that, okay. But the thing is, is that sometimes people know that they're not ready to get married they don't want to get married so they keep stringing the person along giving them hopes that one day uh i've even heard of uh, uh men proposing to a woman giving her a ring but she's worn that ring for 10 years he still is saying oh i'm too afraid to commit 
or I'm too, I, I, I don't know, uh, I, I, we're going to get married, but the time is not right. And in between time, they're having children, they're doing marital things, they're living together, but they're not ready to commit. Cut the cow, okay? Cut the cow. And you don't want to deal with that. Another thing that is important for someone to have as a good leader is a good attitude, a good attitude. Um, if you're in the workplace and the, the leader has a nasty attitude, then that's going to uh, make a hostile environment for the whole workplace. And it's the same thing in relationships. If, you have, if you're dealing with someone that has a nasty disposition, then you can't possibly have a happy marriage. And so therefore, when you're dealing with those that are abusers or, or narcissists or whatever, they tend to... Uh, uh, be in bad moods a lot. They tend to not uh, be happy. As, and then you might say, well, they're only that way with me, but they don't show that to other people. And as we know that ma uh, narcissists often wear masks. They're, they're camouflage, okay? They blend in with their environment, which means that they're not going to show that side to other people for the most part. But you, if you are the recipient of the abuse, then you will often see it. So it it is again important to have a good attitude but if that person doesn't have a good attitude now we often you know sometimes you you might things might happen and you it can you know you you might allow it to affect your mood and that's normal but at the same time if this is all the time or if it's uh, even half of the time you, uh, no one should be unhappy all the time or and even if you are there's a way to still treat other people, even if you're going through some issues yourself. So again, this is something that needs to be paid attention to. Does the person have a good attitude? And if they don't have a good attitude, then guess what? You're more than likely not going to have a good relationship with that person. All right, we're going to take another quick break and we'll be back in just a moment. Somebody so, so much it makes you cry Have you ever needed something so sad you can't sleep at night? Have you ever tried to find the words but they don't come out right? Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever
qualities that we're talking about today these are qualities that are so important to have in a relationship and if you're missing any of these in the relationship then it, you need to reevaluate some things and and talk to someone who can help you a counselor a good counselor therapist that can help you navigate and if you're in a relationship with someone that you have not married you need to think about some things before you say i do Another thing that is so important for a good leader to have is creativity, creativity. And in, in order to uh, be able to have that workplace thrive, there needs to be a leader that can, um, that can be creative and, and look for new ways to improve things. And this is also important in a relationship. Uh, it's important to have someone who's creative. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about in an artistic sense. Um, everyone can't draw, everyone can't paint. I'm, I'm talking about for us trying to develop new things for us, your relationship. Even if this means to go to a counselor and say, okay, what can I do for us, our relationship in order to help that relationship to thrive, uh, in order to help the relationship to grow, in order to help that relationship to be its best. And this is it, and this is good to have. Uh, if you have, uh, you might say, well, you know, I'm not creative in what to do in this related relationship, so therefore I need to bring somebody in. Uh, oftentimes when you're dealing with companies in the workplace, they will hire someone from the outside to to uh, to help them to be able to grow that company. Um, for example, a marketing expertise. So this is also in the relationship. You might have you might be stuck in the relationship where you're at right now, and you say, you know what, I, I I need to bring someone else in to help. And so both of you all can go to that counselor, that therapist, in order to help you to be able to navigate uh, that relationship. Now, unless you're in a, 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 a like a physically abusive relationship, and even emotionally or verbal abuse, you need to talk to someone. If you're physically being harmed, you need to get out as safely as possible. Let them work on themselves by themselves and you get your help, the help that you need as safely as possible. Another thing, number nine is intuition, intuition. Good leaders have intuition, okay? They can sense things, okay? They can plan ahead. They can look in advance. They're, they're uh, uh, visionaries, okay? So when you are in a relationship, you, you need to listen to your God-given intuition. Uh, uh, we call it spiritual discernment. Uh, it is so important to have spiritual discernment in order to discern the right relationship. So if you have not said I do and you are thinking, Thinking about getting into a relationship with someone, you need to have that intuition. Listen to your intuition, that spiritual discernment that's on the inside of you that might be saying, um, there, there, there's something quite not right with this person. Ask God to help you look beyond the rose colored glasses that you may have on and listen to your inner intuition that God has given you so that you will not make a mistake if you have made it once. You may have said, I've been in relationships before where they've been abused or whatever the case may be. I don't want to be in that again. Okay, well, pray for spiritual discernment. Um, last but not least, number 10, honesty. Good leaders are honest. Good leaders have to be trustworthy. Good leaders are honest with their employees, okay? A good leader will be honest and, and tell you, hey, if you're doing a good job, if you're not, if there's some things you need to work on, or even if the company's about to come to a close, uh, uh, a good leader will tell you the truth, all right? This is so important in a marriage as well. Any type of marriage, any type of relationship. If the person start out lying in the relationship, then guess what? They're going to lie all throughout the relationship. 
you need someone that's going to be honest with you. Someone that's going to um, not hide things. Uh, uh, some somebody that's going to be speak the truth and, and and do so with love. And now, when you're dealing with abusers, they will often make you feel like their truth is the only truth, and they often twist the truth, and they will gaslight you to make you doubt your reality. So, therefore, you have to know the difference between them being honest and when they're gaslighting you, and that goes back to number nine, intuition, spiritual discernment. You can't have a relationship, at least a healthy relationship, if there is a lack of trust. And a good, healthy relationship will always be based upon trust and honesty. Most important, and I will close with this, as an evangelist, your relationship needs to be built upon the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. You cannot have a healthy relationship with anyone if you don't have Christ in the center, Jesus and he he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one that ordained marriage. I don't care what the world says, okay? Um, you have to have Jesus in the center of your relationship. Without Christ, you will not have a good relationship. So many people try and they fail. And therefore, I point you as an evangelist to Jesus. And as a doctor of pastoral counseling I point you to a therapist a counselor who can help you to navigate on the right path all right we're all out of here I pray that today's podcast has been a blessing to you and that you would know guess what your feelings they do matter this is doctor and evangelist K.O. Rich with narc abuse no more help you to admit what you feel in order to heal from the effects of narcissistic abuse until next time Thank you.